Hello everybody and welcome back to Don't Take It Personally Babe, It Just Ain't Your Story. I'm Danger Kitty, and bitch this is my story. So let's see, we got seven messages to check, so let's see what's going on here. Oh, that's that stupid conversation about a show that nobody gives a shit about. Tell me about your love. Let's see. Alright, oh, that's so sad. It's really tragic that it never works out with you two. What are you going to do about it? Kill myself, probably. It'd be less dramatic and less stupid. That's typical high school bullshit right there. That's awful. Don't even joke about that. That is actually pretty awful. Let's see. Cat face. Lol, he is actually making that face right now. It's hilarious. So. Excuse me, Mr. Ruck. Yes. How can I help you? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Of course, any time. Is this what was up earlier, or would you rather talk about it somewhere more privately? It is. Not right now, though. How about after school? Certainly. Do you know where my office is? Yes, room 12, right? I've been there several times. Okay, great. I'll see you there then. Thanks. She's all happy. Awkward wonder what's up with her. I hope this time it's actually something I can help with. I'm not really sh I'm really not sure about her. She's always so quiet. It worries me. Kendall, do you know where Akira is? Off having sexy shenanigan with sh with Nolan probably. Kendall. Uh Kendall. Uh, okay. Anytime you want to, bro. Oh yeah, nobody gives nobody gave a shit about that. I remember. I hope so anyway. Bro deserves it. That's not very helpful. Sorry. Um, for serious. I think they've been eating lunch together up on the roof. I checked there first, sis. Thanks. Is it just me, or does she seem even more aloof than usual? Maybe. You should go easy on her. I think she has a lot going on right now. Yeah. I'm just worried. More silence. Realizing I'm just making a weird situation worse, I shrug and go get my lunch, leaving the pair of them alone. Truthfully, I don't think it helps. There's still an unspoken tension in the air. Kendall and Charlotte are chatting, but barely. I don't think it's because of me. I think there's just something else going on here. Oh well. Three fifty-five p.m. That's it for the day. Well, as far as classes go, anyway. Outside, I can hear uh, rather a set of voice. What? Outside, I can hear rather a set of voices shouting rather loudly in unison. Cheerleaders, I suppose. Isabella's probably on her way to my office, but before I go, I should take a break and see if there are any new four chan posts. Uh. Wow, that sounds an awful lot like a suicide note. Well, it's for the better. That's no good. Uh, oh, shit about that finale that nobody gave a shit about. Um, no, got patience. Well, that's enough darling for me. Time to go. I guess I got here first? Well, I can wait. I sit down and wait, tapping my hand on the desk impatiently. Look over my lesson plan for tomorrow, but unlike every other time, I can't see anything worth adjusting. I wonder where she could be. She doesn't really seem like the sort of person to blow off an appointment like that. I hope everything's okay with her. All the worst possibilities of what, could, what it could be race through my head. Maybe she got hurt. Maybe something happened. Maybe she couldn't bring herself to talk about it. Or maybe she... I'm being ridiculous. I just have an overactive imagination is all. I'm sure she's fine. Something probably just came up until later. Or maybe she just got lost? Nah, that can't be it. She knows what room this is. It's not a very big school, and she clearly knew where it was. We have to look for her. Okay, maybe something's wrong. I should go look for her. I should. I do a quick walk in the hallways, looking around every corner. No sign of her. I stop by every classroom of hers. The school's practically deserted by this time of evening, so there's no sign of her. Where could she possibly be? Finally, in desperation, I do another walk of the school, checking every single classroom I pass. Absolutely no sign of her at all. I wonder what happened. Hope she's okay. 
She didn't seem okay at all. I'm really worried. What could be wrong? Well, she did leave basically a suicide note online. That's usually not a good place to start. Once the bell rings, I do attendance, as always. But I can immediately tell who the absence is. Or who the only absence is. Isabella. Has anyone heard from Isabella at all? Anyone? Note. Sure, I wasn't really in a great place emotionally. Kind of go, oh, whatever. The class is silent. Does anyone know how to get a hold of her then? Still more silence. All right. I move on, but not really being... Uh, I move on. They're not really being anything else I can do. But the whole thing gives me a sinking feeling. And they did mention earlier as well in the foreshadowing. And this is the other thing too. This this story seems to be very creative in a sense that like when he starts teaching at the beginning of the day and you'll get those sections where the screen is black but the character is talking, it's obvious foreshadowing for stuff in the story. And they mentioned earlier that there was going to be bloodshed. You get attached to a character and then they uh, the character be stripped away. And it's super important but the because the story is all like – Emotion driven and not plot. So, moving on. Next week. A week later, and I still haven't seen Isabelle at all, and the school still has no way of getting a hold of her at all. It's hard not to assume the worst. Holy shit, there's 13 messages. Uh, did you hear about Bella? Yeah, she killed herself right after we last saw her, apparently. Yep. We knew it. Damn it, I keep pushing the wrong button. A friendship must have. That story just got like really dark in a hurry. It's hard. Not to, uh, whatever. There's nothing I can do about it other than feel terrible about it. Maybe I should have insisted or gone looking for her that evening. I did go looking for her that evening. What could have possibly happened to her? Still, there's nothing I can do. Class still goes on without her. What do you think about the ending? Kendall, I'd really like to hear your thoughts. Um, well, I thought it was good. It ends on an effective note and makes a strong impression. Plus, the repetition of the body count works well for it. Did you think that worked in other parts of the novel, too? For reals, it helps keep things structured. Good point. Any other thoughts? Or anyone else? She sits down without any further word. Uh, oh, look, they're gonna maybe try to go see a movie. Let's see, so it's my turn to host a party this weekend. I don't know that this is really the weekend to host a party, sister. Charlotte raises her hand, and I pause before calling on her. You know, the worst thing about it all is, I find myself thinking, even though Isabella's gone, it's hard to even notice the difference. It doesn't feel like the dynamic of anything has changed with her gone. Let's see, uh, yeah, I'd love to. Let's talk about it at lunch. They're going on a date. Hooray. How utterly horrible is that? That's terrible, but frankly, it's not too far from the truth. End of chapter three. And now I'm depressed. God damn it. We have to start the next unit in two days. The Shakespeare class for this year. I'm looking forward to it even less than I normally would. It's really last minute, but I throw out the whole lesson plan I had prepared. I'm supposed to be teaching Romeo and Juliet, but somehow I don't really think the class is really going to be up for studying a play that ends in suicide. I struggle to put together an entire lesson plan for something a little more lighthearted than that. Whole lot of love. Okay, that just about wraps it up for this unit. I hope you've all learned at least a little bit. I'd like you to note that the syllabus has been updated. We're going to be doing Twelfth Night next, not Romeo and Juliet. Your libraries all have a copy of it already, but your homework for tonight is to not read the script. Don't read it at all. Don't even look at it going to be watching the 22 movie version in class tomorrow because theater is meant to be seen. Then we'll look at the script. That's all. 
I totally agree with that. Reading a play sucks. Watching a play, way, way better. Let's see, uh, oh. So there we go. There's just an email from me to the administrator looking for contact information about Isabella, and there was nothing. Okay. Strange. I normally get cut off by the lunch bell ringing. I guess I must get be getting better at my timing. All right. You can all go to lunch, or all go for lunch a couple minutes early. There's a loud clamor as everyone leaves the classroom at once, same as always. And same as always, there are students staying behind. But lately, it's been less than before. Hey sis, I can't stick around today. Miss Mighton wants to see me, like now, for some stupid reason. I'll see you later, okay? Of course! It's not a problem! Good luck with her! Oh, we got messages. Uh, oh good, he approves of my homework. Hooray. I'm doing Romeo and Juliet because of Isabella, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'll need it. Laters. I guess it's just us that- I guess it's just us then! Yeah. I take out my own lunch and start to eat quietly. Charlotte does the same. An awkward silence hangs in the air, though. So? Yes. Um? She stops uncomfortably, and I can tell she wants to say something, but can't bring herself to. Uh, so you know, I have to apologize for tuning you so poorly. Oh, okay, good. So they're kind of getting their shit together. So, how is Twelfth Night? Is it good? I guess it depends on whether or not you like Shakespeare. Yeah, kind of. He's not as bad as everyone says, anyway. Well, then you'll probably find it very funny. Ah, that's good. Twelfth Night is one I'd never read. I read Romeo and Juliet and uh, Julius Caesar, but that was about it. I haven't read any of his other stuff. More silence. That's obviously not what she really wanted to ask. I can't take this anymore. I'm just going to ask her. Is there something wrong, Charlotte? No, not at all. I'm fine. I give her a look. It's just... This is a weird question, Mr. Rook, but do you think she was telling the truth? Who? Oh, Kendall. She says she was going to talk to a teacher, but do you think she was just lying so she could avoid me? I'm taken aback by the question. I don't think so, of course, but why would she think that? Why do you ask that? Does she seem like she would do that? Uh, oh yeah, whatever. Oh, what it, well, whatever, fuck it. I don't know, but even now that we're talking again, she always seems so reluctant to actually talk with me. We never really say anything of value and it always feels like she's uncomfortable being with me. And it's not like she's talking to me on Amy either. I guess that's true now that she mentions it. Though I don't think her understanding is quite right. Well, as much as anyone can understand Kendall. I don't think she can actually stand me anymore. I feel like she, I should just talk to her and tell her that she doesn't have to make excuses. Would you really do that? No, because I'm selfish. Well, at least you can admit it, kind of. Uh, let's see. What is she saying? I was so worried because... I'm glad you're able to... Monday, Monday at lunch, things I need to say. Okay, cool. So getting together on Monday to sort shit out. Selfish. She stops, as if only now she's realized what she's been saying. As if only now she realizes how emotionally vulnerable she clearly is. Promise not to repeat a word of this, Mr. Rook. Of course not. I... But she still has trouble coming up with the words. I... Were you aware that we used to be a couple? We only broke up a few weeks ago. Well, I have to stop myself from saying, of course. I have to give it a moment's thought. I knew it, of course, but how did I know it? Did I read about it on AmiConnect, or did someone also mention it in front of me? Uh, I plead ignorance. It's not worth taking the chance. No, I didn't know, but it explains a lot. Yeah. Have you ever had a perfect thing before Mr. Rook had ruined it? Man, what a question. More than once, actually. I'd love to say it gets easier, but it doesn't. No, I'd imagine not. Still, I miss everything about the way things were. Kendall is just so perfect. Are you still in love with her? I don't know. How could you tell when you're in love? Is, is it just like all the songs or all the movies? If it's not like that, does it mean I'm not in love? 
tough questions. Yeah, tell me about it. All I know is that I can't bring myself to give up on her, even though she's clearly not interested in me anymore. Maybe that's how you know it's love, because it, it makes me act awful. I stare at her, giving it a long, thoughtful pause. She's wrong, of course. She seems unusually dense, too. I could tell that Kendall wouldn't be friendly just for the sake of appearances. I think anyone could tell that. What she sees in her, I have no idea, and I don't want to play either matchmaker or cheerleader for teenage girls. But I don't get how she could be so wrong. Why not just ask if she wants to get back together? She seems stunned at the proposition. I don't think you understand, Mr. Rook. I was the one who broke up with her. If anyone has to make the move, it's her. It's out of my hands. Well, what's the harm in trying? What's the worst that could happen? I could lose her. I could cause her to just finally stop even trying to put up with me at all. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I can't. She takes a long, deep sigh, trying her hardest to calm her, herself back down. I feel bad for getting her so worked up. I guess that wasn't the right approach for her at all. Damn it. I don't want to lose her. Well, I pause again, considering my approach. You said you weren't sure what love feels You said you weren't sure what love feels like, right? That's right. Well, in my experience, it means you know it's worth the risk. Love means you'll try anyway, even if you know for almost certain, or even though for absolute certain you'll get shot down. Because you have to. In all my experience, that's what it seems that love is really all about. So I think the love is what come. So I think that's what it comes down to. Are you still in love with her? She's silent, and I can't tell if she's contemplating the question or just thinks that I'm crazy. It's probably a little of both. She looks down, and there's a long silence. Neither of us, uh, neither of us says a word, and I don't know what to say. After what feels like the longest time without saying anything, at long last, Kendall returns. Sorry, bro. Am I interrupting anything? Charlotte takes a moment to calm down. No, not at all. We were just talking about the play we're going to study. Ah, oh, balls already? For reals? I'm afraid so. It's time to get to class. Yeah, yeah. Avo. She starts to leave just as soon as she came, and Charlotte starts packing up too. Hey, Charlotte? Yes, Mr. Rook? Then I try to think of what to tell her. Uh, I'm just going to wish her good luck. Good luck, Charlotte. Thanks, Mr. Rook. She turns and walks off to join Kendall. I lean back, staring at what's left of my lunch. Half of it's still left sitting on my desk. What an intense conversation. I never thought about Charlotte that way before. She's always just been the smart, focused one. I can only wonder how things will work out, but I sure hope it's well. That evening. Discover what happens that evening on the next episode of Don't Take It Personally, Babe. It's just not, it just ain't your story. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz if you like. I love you all, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.